This is Tom Caswell. I am here with Ben Janka. Hey there. Uh, we are two of Death Stranding's biggest fans on the GameSpot team, and we thought we'd break down the Death Stranding 2 trailer with you. Before we get started, I do just want to say, obviously, we are breaking this trailer down. That's going to mean talking about Death Stranding 1. There's stuff in here that kind of spoils a little bit of Death Stranding 1 as well. So if you haven't played Death Stranding or, or you know you don't want to know any Death Stranding 1 spoilers, this video isn't for you. But if you do and you want to learn everything pretty much that there is to know about Death Stranding 2's trailer, we're here to break it down. So we're going to jump right in. You ready, Ben? Absolutely. All right. So the first thing we've got here is this baby toy uh, of dolphins. There's actually already a couple of clues here. Um, obviously, dolphins and like aquatic animals, they were the inspiration for a lot of the, des the designs for the BTs, the beached things, the monsters in Death Stranding 1. Uh, for people that don't understand, a beached thing is a soul that has been disconnected from uh, the body in the real world. In Death Stranding, you have to destroy the body by incinerating it in order for the soul to move on. Uh, and so you have these battles with these BTs, and one of one of the designs is a, is a dolphin. So I think that's where this kind of like inspiration for this to be a dolphin toy came in. Um, we also have a Bridges logo. If you see just the tail end there, Bridges being one of the uh, kind of groups in Death Stranding 1 on the toy on the left, if you can see that. And then I don't know if you remember this, Ben, but um, apparently at the end of Death Stranding 1, I had to look this up, you get a sticker that says I Heart BB. Do you remember this at all? Yeah, so I, I'm, I don't remember if it was for beating it or for like maxing out your relationship link with them, but you get mm. like a whole bunch of different patches actually to put on your backpack. Gotcha. Uh, and I think they, they added more when they put out the definitive edition as well. So you, mm -hmm. you could just kind of use that to fill in spots on your backpack and stuff. But I remember the iHeartBB one specifically. So I'm pretty sure it's one that be, I put on there. Yeah. That seems to be what we have here. It's being used on this toy. It's a little torn as uh, a sticker is want to, to get sometimes. So, yeah. So we have the toy. Now, you may say, Tom, you can't simply – you can't talk about a black screen – but what's very important about Death Stranding trailers is they have these flash cuts to imply blinking, like someone's watching the trailer. So this is, other than the stuff that we see in that first bit there, we this is also a clue where they have these cuts to, you know, these flash cuts to black, that this is a Death Stranding trailer. So the, the wonderful Kojima editing. Yeah, he loves he loves to he loves to have these weird blinking edits. Uh, you want to talk about what we're seeing in this scene here, Ben? Uh, so you've got one of those cool little uh, like you, you slot the shapes in uh, like a, a toy for a kid to mess around with. But the interesting thing is here, you you don't have all of the usual shapes. There's one that stands out as kind yeah, of odd. The circle, right? Yeah, the circle. It doesn't belong here. Uh, but so they're, they're, they've got the crab shape, which uh, you, mm -hmm. you'd see a lot of crabs washed up on on the beaches in the game, uh, which was kind of an interesting thing. And you've also got like a the little transport truck also back mm -hmm. there, which is kind of cool. That red um, block is the crab to is like the crab piece for him to or for her to put uh, into the toy as well. That one in front of the truck, I think, is yes. the crab. Yeah. So the beaches in Death Stranding One are basically kind of like limbo. They're like the midway point for people for, between life and death. Uh, so that that's why there's a lot of like sea imagery. And uh, and the crabs, yeah, would appear on a lot of people's beaches kind of creepily. Um, so yeah, so we have, again, more hints that this is, this is Death Stranding. And we have a baby playing with the toys. Now, there's a lot of stuff in here. I initially thought this meant the baby was two years old until I remembered this is a ruler, which means they <laughs> are uh, a height of two feet. We also have the handprints from the baby, which uh, handprints were signifying the uh, BT was near because they'd be BT is usually invisible. So you would have to like go by the handprint and they'd have like this, there's this tar substance that comes from the beach into the real world. I don't think that this is the tar substance. I think they're literally just using ink to take the, the baby's prints. Um, 
Now, I don't have a baby, Ben. Are you, are you a father? Uh, I do not have a baby okay. as well. I, I was just wondering, like, how old is a baby that they could reach up to above two feet? Um, but, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're over two feet tall. We're going to see more of the baby in a sec. But, again, just more hints that we... Uh, that this is a Death Stranding trailer. And we do seem to have a crypto biote, which are these like, I don't know what 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 genus they are, but they're these little worm grub-like things that they eat in the previous game uh, for sustenance, essentially. And there seems to be like a plush toy of that in the in the corner of the frame there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so we have again more blinking. Now this is a very interesting. Um, this I not mistaken. This specific imagery we have not seen before, right? No, it's it's the the interesting thing about it is, uh, at least this is what I picked up originally on seeing it. It it looks like Amelie. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, and I believe which makes sense. The, I didn't get a chance to actually. Where trailer goes? <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't get a chance to actually like cross check this but the the order of the knots on her kipu that she has i think match oh. up with the lines up behind the the head oh um, oh on the well we do see the kipu yeah. so amelie is the is the sister well it's confusing it is the quote unquote sister of the main character sam and in, in ds1 she has this kipu this necklace and you're right that does look like the upside down, the reverse height of that kipu. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'd, I'd have to double check, but yeah. there's, there's something in my brain that's like mm, that sticks out. It looks a familiar. Bit. Yeah, and we'll get to, we'll get to the end of the trailer where we see it, so maybe we can cross reference it there. But yeah, so Amelie, it seems to be this whole sequence here seems to be this. Uh, well, we get Sony Interactive Entertainment, so they're publishing it again. Um. Powered by Decima. So there is this cult that seems to be going on a pilgrimage here. Uh, so they seem to be revering Amelie as a goddess. Amelie in Death Stranding 1 was an extinction entity. Basically, the idea is that throughout time, there are these extinction entities uh, that come about, uh, that line up with extinction events on Earth and in the universe, I guess. And it's meant to be kind of like the universe is trying to uh, collapse in on itself and it you, mm-hmm. it creates these extinction ent- entities which Amelie was the sixth one that was meant to bring about the last stranding uh, the last uh-huh. extinction event to end uh, existence once and for all and um, the, there were there were characters that revered Amelie but they weren't quite a cult it wasn't a religion they, they were described as like a terrorist group, right? You had Higgs at the head of it. But it seems like this is like that taken to the next level. So this is the other interesting thing. Because I, I bumped into this just because I was, I was looking through the, the the Reddit for like, see what other people had, had also stumbled into. Yeah. Uh, there's kind of a, an interesting point here looking at all of the design here. It's really kind of art deco with the figure, which is a thing that Bridges did. A lot of their stuff was yes. art deco design. And they've also got the weird like butterfly things uh, on the on the sarcophagus going on. And maybe people are thinking that this could be like Bridges after everything that had happened. And they'd kind of gone <sighs> over the edge. And even Sam at one point is mm-hmm. like, they're just a big cult uh, in the original game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's definitely elements of that at play, and there's obviously more stuff that we see later in the trailer that hints at like a, a reformation of bridges as well. But yeah, this definitely seems like a combination of what we saw from the kind of like fan- the Amelie fanatics in DS One with uh, with that bridges aesthetic. Now, this is clearly a casket. And if you look at the uh, on the middle of the casket, there are these like open slits um, mm-hmm. that you can kind of see through and kind of hint at the character that I think we're going to see at the end of the trailer. But they're clearly carrying someone in this casket um, on this kind of pilgrimage. Um, now, I don't know what the what the heck I'm looking at here. Uh, there was nothing in Death Stranding One that. I mean, again, you could look at this and like, oh, the bits of the kipu kind of yeah. like line up with these blocks. But what are your thoughts here, Ben? 
Uh, I'm wondering if it's meant to be uh, like that's like a, a, a landmark or something that we should sort of recognize, but it's broken up. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of thoughts on where y- y- this game is going to go like physically because uh, we've we've done all this stuff in the, the US. We went across right. the, the whole country. So I'm wondering if this is like maybe some building or some sort of structure like over in Europe or something that might have kind of like a thing. It might be like a, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure, but it, yeah. it, it definitely sticks out the, the whole sand, the imagery, everything is all, all wild and, and unlike everything that we saw in the first game. Yeah. There's nothing, there's nothing like this in DS one. We can also see strands uh, in like around the edges of this obelisk. Um, which signifies that basically, and there's, again, going to be more stuff later in the trailer that we see that signifies that, you know, at the end of DS1, the Death Stranding is meant to be over. Amelie is meant to have closed herself off, closed her beach off from the world, right? So it's meant to be like the BTs are gone, the time fall is gone and everything. But there's a lot in this trailer that hints that basically all of this is back. And I think part of what we're looking at is maybe this cult is trying to create an artificial, they're trying to reopen the connection to the beach, Amelie's beach specifically to try and bring about the last stranding. Cause again, in DS one, it wasn't like, Oh, you guys are safe. Amelie was like, her plan initially was to bring about the extinction quicker to kind of, cause she felt like it was inevitable that it was going to mm-hmm. happen. Um, but in at the end, she decides, you know, looking at Sam, that she's going to buy them time. Maybe they can figure out a way. So she's clo- the Death Stranding is still like there. It's just kind of contained in her beach, and um, you know, maybe this cult is like cool. Like we can like maybe force an, a way artificially to uh, to to re kick the last stranding back in, um, and maybe this gate has something to do with it. Um, anyway, let's continue. Cool, Kojima. There we go. So this is Louise. Uh, we can actually see it's a little blurry on this on this trailer, but on her bib in the bottom right corner there, you can actually read her name. Uh, and this is a baby. Yeah. Um, from my understanding of babies, <laughs> this is not. She wouldn't be that much older. This is only a few months, maybe a year. After Death Stranding one, based on this baby, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's still very much a baby, but it has grown a little bit. It's grown it's a got, little bit. It's got hair. It's got hair, and it's it's a bit bigger. I'm gonna say this is around the one year mark, ish. Again, neither of us have kids, but from everything I know about babies, uh, uh yeah. And this I, is yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I was I was gonna go into something that, that that's a little bit ahead with the next character we're gonna see. Mm. Uh, so I could probably wait to do that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Yeah, I mean, you know, so for people that uh, are not... Oh, yeah, you can see it a bit better there, Louise, in the corner. Um, For people that don't... There we go, perfect, boom. Uh, So for people, you know, the ending of Death Stranding 1, uh, Lou is the the name uh, Sam gives the BB in his tank. He takes it out of the tank, saves it. That actually is what causes Amelie to close her beach. Uh, saves its life and and basically starts to seemingly is going to go raise it and gives uh, and Lou is for Louise who is the baby that he lost uh, in a void out along with his own wife and it is being held by the next character we see Leia Sado aka the character of Fragile and there's mm-hmm. a lot of interesting questions here but you said you had something yeah. to say about Fragile well, so let's uh, let's hear it. So I'm 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 convinced that we're looking at two different timelines in this mm-hmm. trailer. Sure. And uh, mostly because of this, because uh, people who who played the original game know that Fragile wears a, a jacket and, and clothes that cover her entire body. Uh, she was forced out into the the time fall to save a city from blowing up to make up for a horrible mistake she had a long time ago. And everything was basically forced aged except for her face. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, And here you can see uh, everything is fine. She looks Uh, great. Looking great. Yeah. Uh, So I'm wondering if this is pre that 
Uh, I'm wondering if there are scenes later on that are nightmares that she may be having of when she couldn't save things. Um, uh, it, there's there's a lot to kind of wonder about and unpack with that. But yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm still trying to, to figure out I'm, two different timelines. Maybe maybe it's all the same thing. Maybe she got healed. Maybe. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I'm going to bring something up la- later when we see another character about why I think that this is... So you think that so you're you're saying that you, your hypothesis this is way later. I'm thinking this may be even earlier, which makes oh the stuff before with the baby oh weirder, interesting interesting. Uh, like, is it maybe a different baby that is gone? And this uh, ha- also the happens to be called Louise. Uh, it could be a dream. Wings. Like, there's a million things it could um, be. But <laughs> there are there are wings uh, on this baby. Uh, uh, I think that is a part of the collar of the bib. I don't yeah. think that those are physical, although, again, stuff we'll I mean, see later in this trailer. Interesting. It's like, like a symbolism. Like, oh, definitely some symbolism. Maybe like it's like an angel. They're not, maybe they're not, they're not alive later on or something. Now, um, it, it's, yeah. now, here's the thing. So the thing that makes me think that this isn't a prequel or like happened before Death Surrounding 1 or whatever is we do have Sam's Dreamcatcher. Um, yeah. So Sam is in the picture somehow she has the baby there's obviously hints that they're raising the baby together um but this is sam's dream catcher um that he is given by amelie when he is a child um so something just tells me that like sam is not around in this moment um yeah. uh shit hits the fan that clearly in a bunk of the sky is is a fake screen sky amelie's looking around this is Lou's BB tank that they're using as a crypto biote aquarium. Whether yeah, that is neat, do you think that's for utility? Uh, my my thing was is like they were just like, oh, let's have a kooky aquarium in our weird bunker house. You know, they, I don't yeah, know yeah. if there's necessarily like anything that like, oh, we have it. I don't know if there's necessarily any story uh, to why it is an aquarium or they, you know, utilizing it uh, uh. to keep crypto biotes, but. Also, I, I I feel silly for not literally looking to the right. There's an ad for the pizza place. Right. So the uh, pi- the pizza was one of the the pizza delivery was one of the side quest chains in DS One. Um, there's also the Ludens duck as well on yeah. the right there, and then um, which is uh, a rubber duck version that you can buy. You can buy that from Kojima's like website uh, of Kojima Productions mascot Ludens. And then there's also the thumbs up sticker as well on a notebook, which is a, a, a symbol that a lot of pe- a lot of characters oh, give in the first game. There's there's a part of me that hopes that that's like a children's book about like 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 a like a nursery rhyme about getting likes for like doing yeah. things for people or something. <laughs> like it's it's a bunch of ki- it's a bunch of books to like read to to Louise or something. Yeah, and that I'm, that I'm he uses that. as that that Kojima uses as like tutorials in the game. Yeah, yeah. You know, in the something. beginning, like it explains the gameplay, but it's through these children's books. I like that a lot. Um, so yeah, so this flashing, everything is going to hell. Uh, so something I want to point out, we do also see, um, now here's the interesting thing. There is, there is something to be said about um, your timeline theory. Cause I think we do actually get a fake out here because you would say in this frame, I'm using my mouse here to point. You'd say in this frame that that oh, there's Sam's dream catcher, mm-hmm. but it's not his dream catcher. Yeah, it's a different dream catcher. And I think that the fake out is maybe you're right. Maybe these are taking like this shot of the dream catcher is from something else. Is from something else because they're not in the frame here. We just have the room. There's like someone sitting in a chair behind it. Is there someone sitting in a chair? Or is there something resting in a chair? Because I don't see any yeah. like legs. I see the legs of the chair. I don't see yeah. like someone. So maybe it's just holding something. Maybe there's something on there. Maybe it's an empty chair. It's very hard to tell because of the depth of field. But this dream catcher and that dream catcher are not the same. But they are absolutely not. And I didn't notice that. That's great. Yeah. So I think, I think, I mean, look, it wouldn't be a Kojima thing if there wasn't going to be some fake out. So I do think there is something to the case that we're not seeing things quite in sequence in this trailer or even remotely in the same time frame. But 
there is a dream catcher there there's also if you see on the left here there's moth mx which is another symbol that we see later like in a few um shots i i googled that that i couldn't find anything on that i don't know what that is seems to be like the manufacturer of that's put this bunker together again it could be another one of these many companies it seems that is formed after the end of the death stranding Mm -hmm. um any thoughts there moths also like you talked about butterflies like that imagery obviously like very important to the the first game yeah i I think you might be on the right track with it being like a manufacturer uh at some point and that 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 might just be like the the label for it yeah we got another crypto bio toy uh down here um yeah i think we can move on to the next shot obviously obviously not happy with anything that's going on here uh, I don't think that there's really anything, obviously, a Hideo Kojima. Now, Ben, I don't know if you know this, Hideo Kojima, the creator of Death Stranding 1, this shot explains that he is also making Death Stranding 2. I just mm. want to, which is interesting, you know. These are the, the heavy hitting <laughs> ones, or we're on top of it. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Yep, more panic shot from this. Uh, this is, okay, a couple of things here. First off, you couldn't convince me that this isn't like a shot of Leia Sado. This game, these cinematics look substantially improved mm-hmm. from DS1, which is already a great looking game. But like, holy cow, does yeah. this look great? <laughs> the the lighting really just yeah. it sells it completely too. It's it's really great. The moistness of the skin and the <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like she's yeah, yeah, clearly yeah. like sweating. Um, also the cuts that we get that are meant to simulate blinks are no longer simulating blinks. They are legitimate blinks. Like yeah, there's like an actual closing of an eyelid. Uh, so, you know, we're getting more of that. She's looking around. She's panicked, panicked, more eyelids. I thought this was Kyrelium for a sec, but this just seems to be like overgrowth. Uh, so maybe it's like a forgotten bunker. They found like one that like wasn't utilized. Obviously, one of the plots of DS One is they set they initially had set up all these like connective things, and then the plan was is that you know set them up across the country and then reconnect them. This is bridges, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but so maybe there's one that was like off the beaten path that just like never got reconnected to the network. I got to play through DS One again, man. Great game. Yeah. Um, someone is in here. We don't really get an opportunity to see who is invading, uh, the bunker, but there is someone invading, uh, Leia Sado coming up top again behind here on her right shoulder. We see this says moth MX, but it's, it's M O T H M X. But again, that seems to be, which makes me think that this isn't a bridges thing. This, this structure. It looks like it from the outside. Maybe they've remodded it. I don't know. Uh, we've run outside here. Uh, there's this unicycle, which is very cool. I love it a lot. I love yeah, how it's it, very it, cool. It's like gets a speed bike. Uh, this whole bit is a real bummer. Yeah, she gets shot in the arm. This is all pretty self-explanatory. There's nothing. Who is this character with this gun? Yeah, uh, I think <laughs> reflexively you're supposed to be like, ah, Higgs, but like you can't. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> H- so, Higgs, Higgs, for everything we know, is either dead or stuck on the beach Yeah, from the end of DS1. We don't really know what happens because Sam leaves Higgs with Fragile. So we don't really see what the, the resolution of that is. Higgs is obviously like the first name that that jumps out here, but I don't think that's who we're looking at. Yeah, I don't think it is either. Um, Okay, now okay, now we get into the. I mean, not that nothing we talked about wasn't interesting already, but this is the really interesting stuff. So we've got a shot now of the baby in the throat, which signified. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that was a a, a repatriation. Yeah, repatriation stuff. So so certain characters, including Sam in the first game, could repatriate. And every time he'd repatriate, you get the shot of the baby in the throat. But this one's crying the tar substance, which we see in, I think, Higgs and Cliff in the first game are the only two that do that um, because of their connection to the beach. Uh, So I don't really... What are your thoughts on the crying, the tar crying, basically? 
That's Cause, also because a... she's doing it. She's yeah. doing it here, so she's repatriated. Which I don't think in the first game she was a repatriate. Uh, so I maybe that's maybe... how she gets her younger skin. Maybe I I think they might have. I don't know why I feel like they mentioned it, but I don't remember exactly when or where. Uh, uh no, but... you know what? She she isn't a repatriate because she has dooms, and I think that Sam is oh, the yeah. only. I think Sam is the only person to have dooms and be a repatriate. So I don't think she was a repatriate in the first game. Yeah, she can she can see. BTs, the stuff right, and yeah. that I think that might be the extent of it, but yeah, she could see her BTs and use her beach to travel. Those were like her two abilities. Yeah, um, dooms being abilities that hu- some humans got from like shit being fucked with the <laughs> with, with the with the climate and you know the world. Uh, yeah. So we see Lou crying. Then we have um, fragile like pass out here. I was going to say that that whole scene, I think, is also removed from what we saw before. I agree. I do not. Th- um, I mean, clearly everything's like on fire. So something yeah. has happened. I think they may be connected somewhat somehow, but there's something in the middle there. It, it doesn't go from what we saw before to this. There's yeah. there's some other shit. I thought, oh, maybe a void out happened because like everything's ruined. But this does, you know, they're not in a crater. The void out doesn't leave fire. You know, it's kind of like a, it's an antimatter explosion, right? So it's just like a, a an abscess of anything. So yeah. I, th- I think, uh, I don't know necessarily what happened, but again, we're, those things do not just happen one after the other. Yeah, the, the first thing that popped into my head was maybe, maybe not even like an actual, hap- maybe like a, a nightmare about the, mm-hmm. the city that she ended up accidentally nuking. There's also that too, right? Something. Because uh, having nightmares was also like, oh, you're having visions and stuff yeah. like that in the first one. So maybe like there's some nightmare stuff going on, which would also play into your idea of things kind of being on a different timeline. Um, we get an interesting shot here, the broken uh, BB tank slash CryptoBio Aquarium, uh, where a Lou BT seems to be falling in. So again, in DS1, end of the game, BTs do not exist anymore because the beach is closed. So from what we're seeing here, you know, and, you know, repatriation, like all these things should not necessarily be possible because the the Death Stranding is over. So the fact that Lou is coming back as a BT, you know, the the, the connection between, between uh, the Death Stranding, the, you know, the beaches and all that and the real world is clearly like opening up or has opened up again. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, now, now we have to pause on this. So, yeah, so this, <laughs> this this is when we start talking about the, the logos and stuff. Yeah, so we do see, this is the first uh, of the three logos that Kojima put out that we see, but we get a little bit more. We get Drawbridge, um, which is a play on the word bridge, obviously. And we get the subtitle, both stick and rope to protect and connect together for tomorrow. Uh, we'll see later in the trailer, there's some text that come up that says something like, should we have connected? But what's interesting about this is that, you know, both stick and rope, the idea that the they these were like the two first weapons or two first items in the world. The stick was used for... Uh, offensive purposes, the rope uh, to bring people together, and so what are your what are your thoughts here? There, there's a lot that I'm thinking, but I'm curious about what you're thinking with this. So I think this is this is another uh, like bridges uh, set up in a similar way, but the fact that it's drawbridge makes me think of what place has more drawbridges, what place has famous drawbridges. Uh, more thinking about like maybe this being kind of like in like in a different country yeah um and maybe that there's another thing coming up later on that makes me think that uh, we might be heading across some oceans uh to some other places (laughs) sure Um, but i I think this might be like a like a bridges but for another country interesting my read on it was i was thinking this is the net this is the next incarnation of bridges now that america is connected we're going to go back to our old colonialist ways and maybe we're going to start like trying to reach out to other countries and that's why it's both stick and rope because their mission is no longer connecting america their mission now is to spread you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and maybe the whole 
thing of like, oh, should we have connected is that when we connect, we are creating uh, scenarios in which we can open ourselves up to be aggressors, right? Um, you know, bringing, making, you know, reforming America, <laughs> you know, yeah. maybe, maybe, maybe has some imp some implications, some negative implications for whatever's happened with the rest of the world. So, uh, I, yeah, I'm also wondering, so the, like a drawbridge effectively is meant to be able to draw back to allow something to go through it. And I'm wondering if there's any significance there. Well, I'm also think thinking. I'm also thinking that this kind of looks like, a, you know, like what I'm, a, a like, bridge support of yeah, something. Yeah, like the the again, right? You're talking about a drawbridge opening up uh, in order to let something through. This is kind of. This might be like that. Like if if you think about it, maybe these two top bits were connected, right? Because they look like they arch in. So mm -hmm. maybe it is like a gateway. It is letting through the Death Stranding. That that imagery playing into the logo as well somehow. Like these floating uh, pillars set, could have separated, right? They could have formed that middle bit and then split to let something through, to let these people through, to let the Death Stranding through. I don't know quite what, but it, now that I'm spending time like kind of like looking at this logo, I'm like, that that looks very similar. Yeah. Um, but I like the thought, obviously, imagery, very important to Kojima's games. And, like, he wouldn't have called it Drawbridge if there wasn't, like, a reason. <laughs> mm -hmm. So now we get the reveal that Norman Reedus is in this game. And he has aged, boy. Yeah. In what is in what we've determined kind of up until now, only a few months. So what are your thoughts on an old Norman Reedus? Uh, I'm wondering, there's a lot of things in this scene that I, I'm wondering about, uh, old Norman Reedus. I'm wondering if this might be like another Kojima doing rapid aging because of some sort of weird thing happening again. I, he might be like afraid of aging. Uh, but I'm wondering if the detachment from the beach has caused things to catch up to Sam and that's why he's older. Yeah, um, I was seeing some theories online that like maybe because he was a BB himself, maybe like you know, a, r a rapid aging, but I like the idea of it being like the beach is now closed and like now his, yeah, like now somehow uh, he is aging faster because of it. I also had the theory that he looks older has maybe something to do with the fact that uh, Fragile looks younger now. Maybe the way, you know, they were like, cool, we saved the world. Let's try and get you young again. And it required, like, maybe some of that aging to be put onto Sam in some way. Yeah, I'm not yeah. quite sure. But I think, you know, interconnected, I think his aging and the fact that Leia Sado is looking normal or, you know, young again, her body at least, um, so that, that's the other thing, though. She's covered back up in this, which makes me think that this is a separate timeline. <laughs> right. like a so, separate time period. So I am curious about uh, her being covered up. I think it could just be that she's wearing clothes. <laughs> you know, like she hasn't yeah, yeah. thrown out the suit. But there is that possibility that, yes, this is her with her older body again. Uh, so we see something here that is very reminiscent to a Metal Gear. When I first watched this trailer, I was like, this is a goddamn Metal Gear. Uh <laughs> I, I was gonna say I, I had so many people hitting me up about this specifically, and uh it's 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 not even just like reminiscent of a metal gear, it's the silhouette. It's the top, it just it's right, like it's literally, literally without the legs. <laughs> it's it's Metal Gear Rex's head, like with yeah, the really the, the, the like cannon and everything. Mm, okay, um, cool. Instead of it being a cannon, it's actually a crane. I've added um, uh, in post. I'm going to be adding a, yeah, like, a, a like shot if you, of that. <laughs> if you go like a little bit further ahead, like to where you get like the kind of three quarters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It. And it looks get, like a mod. Yeah. Like at first, you think it's a big gun, but it is. Um, it is a crane. It's a crane instead yeah. of instead of the the maglev launcher. The, the I forget what it's called exactly. It's 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 magnetic and it shoots nukes and it's dangerous. Uh, but it this looks like Metal Gear Rex's head. That's awesome. Um, so we do have the Drawbridges logo here on the side. We also have the Squid logo, which is our first time seeing that from the trio of logos that Kojima posted on Twitter mm -hmm. uh, with the words D. I think it says DHV Magellan. Uh, tried to Google that uh, in relation to Death Stranding. Couldn't find anything. But 
Ferdinand Magellan, and I'm pulling this from Wikipedia, uh, is an explorer best known for having planned and led the 1519 Spanish expedition to the East Indies across the Pacific Ocean to open a maritime trade route, during which time he discovered the inter-oceanic passage bearing there after his name and achieved the first European navigation from the Atlantic to Asia. Uh, the, the Strait of Magellan uh, is this, like, basically strait that cuts through South America. Um, so that, again, plays into the idea of this not taking place in America, us going beyond the boundaries of America. Uh, any yeah, thoughts so on that? I'm, I was going to say, I'm, I'm thinking, because uh, when, when the scene starts up, you actually hear seagulls, which makes me think we're on the coast. Mm. Uh, and I'm thinking we might still be on the, the West Coast, and we're finding a means to go across the ocean to go and see something in a different country. I, th I think this is like the big embarking moment in the story when we actually head off. And it's through the help of this, uh, this ship that Fragile has that we're able to do it. Gotcha. Very cool. Uh, we do see someone piloting. If you can see in the uh, cockpit, there is someone seemingly sitting in a seat there. Um, we have the words, I think it says born Roma, lawn Roma uh, in the top yeah. left. Um, maybe that's the name of this machine. It says XCV 5800 is what I'm reading. Again, I try to look up this, there seemed to be nothing on it already. We've got 8308 is another number down in the corner here. Um, we have this shot of uh, Leia Sado crying. Now, she could just be crying because she's sad because something happened to Louise if this is taking place after what we saw in the beginning of the trailer. But crying signified Kyrelium and uh, chiral matter being present um, and like time fall about to happen and all that stuff in the first game. And it was like an allergic reaction. So again, hinting at the idea that uh, the bridge, the, 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 gate, the gateway between the afterlife and the real world is um, opening up again. And yeah, Fra Fragile here says, meet my crew, Sam, or something to that effect. Yeah. So she knows these people. But it doesn't seem to be the company fragile that she like inherited from her father and uh, ran. Like this is a new thing, right? Like so, maybe this is like what? What are your thoughts on that? I I think it it's it's got to be something that she just comes upon later on because I I know that there's a whole thing with like fragile the the company got like the the whole reputation of it was thrown off when they figured out the terrorists were working in there working through fragile right the company mm -hmm. not the person yeah yeah but um, also maybe, through the person <laughs> in yeah. a little bit <laughs> uh yeah. so maybe this is like a, a new a new thing to kind of like detach from that and make her own thing uh or yeah and wasn't there connection. wasn't there something like Correct me if I'm wrong, but in the first game, I remember, I think, reading or hearing in one of the things, like, Fragile, the company, kind of, like, connecting with Bridges. Like, didn't that happen at the end? Like, there was the merger? Something yeah, I think to so. that effect. So maybe maybe Draw Bridges is the connection of the two. Like, it was meant to be, like, the United States Postal Service and FedEx. And two now two parts of a bridge coming oh, together to make a bigger bridge. Oh, the Draw Bridge. It's two halves of a bridge, and they're to make they've a bridge. They've drawn it together. They've drawn the bridge. Oh, my God. Um, okay, we get a shot of the underbelly here. This is awesome. Like, I'm just so stoked to see more of this. We get yeah, yeah. number 8303. That's the same number on the front. So, you know, make of that what you will. There's 8303 kind of like all over the chassis of this thing. Uh, old Sam, he's having to cry too. So unless they're being sad together, they're having an allergic reaction to some Death Stranding stuff. Um, now, here's the thing. We see, obviously, in the previous shot of Leia Sado's character, Fragile, she had straps on her in the front. There seems to be the top of what looks like a BB tank strapped to her. So I want to I wanna throw you this theory, and I want to see what your thoughts are and what you think about this. Yeah. I think someone is after Lou, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily Higgs or what have you in his cult. It doesn't seem like that. I think that might be a fake out. I don't think that that's who's after him. But I think that 
Lou dies, uh, the but they have its body, and she is res- Lou is resurrected as a BT that now lives in the pod, mm. and they are trying to because a BT is a soul that is trying to find its body and reconnect with its body. So they're thinking if we can get the body back and connect the BT with it, we can bring Lou back. And which is why they may be crying. They might be like, oh, our baby's gone. Uh, See, it, you know? it also mm-hmm. isn't the first time someone had kept a BT baby around because they wanted to hope Mama. to maybe fix it. Right. Uh, yes. So that that could be a, a, a big thing. I also want to talk about the fact that the thing that's holding that uh, the BT container looks like hands and it makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, I'm sure because, I'm sure that there's some imagery like that. <laughs> yeah, you can you can see it a bit better in the other shots, but it's it's kind of a weird uh, thing that I just noticed. Oh like yeah, it, it in the looks, front. Yeah, it looks like hands reaching. It's yeah down. Yeah. Um, but it it I I like that idea of of BB maybe being a BT because it's being very intentionally kept out of the shot. Yes, it's uh, very intentional that we're not seeing what that is. It also could be like the head of a baby as well. Like it could be Lou human in her head. Um, it's it's so hard to see because you just see you just see the top and you uh, in the depth of field and all that. But I think that that's a good story, and I yeah. think that it could be like maybe they've been hiding and now they have to go. Now they have to venture out because it is to save Lou. Like that to me kind of like makes. That's a good like emotional story. That's a good place to go. That's just also, a theory that I have. Right yeah, now. Uh, I'm also I'm thinking about the the crying allergic reaction to to stuff, and I, I don't remember if the the tar specifically set it off because the, the thing is coming out of the tar, mm-hmm. um, and I'm wondering because the the tar is used to transport things from the beach. Right. So that's the other thing is this machine is coming out of the tar. So I'm wondering if that's like like a fast travel thing or something, and they're just using that ship to go through it and. Or, or are they able to go back to a, a beach? Or I mean, they must be right because like Tar's presence means that there is a beach connected. I don't know if it necessarily means like Amelie's beach is open. They may be crying because of that. Maybe the I think there is Kyrelium in the Tar. I always kind of like this is where like my everything gets hazy for me on like yeah. what is causing the crying. Um, but yeah, so I, I but I do think that that is what is happening. Like they have used. Uh, the beach in some way to to uh, transport this ship to them. Um, then we get the list of the cast members: Norman Reedus is returning, Leia Sado, Ellie Fanning, and Shirley Kitsuna, uh, who were teased. Uh, they were the first two teased uh, to be in this game. We didn't know it was Death Stranding at the time; we just knew it was the next project from Hideo Kojima. And then Troy Baker is returning, who is singing the BB's theme. Um, in the background of the trailer itself. Yeah, which I also, I don't know if it's going to be significant at all, and it's just a really quick thing that I noticed. Uh, intentionally leaves the first two lines out of it when it starts up. Uh, mm. I don't know w- if that's significant singing. or anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, only going to be on PS5, no PS4. Uh, so, you know, hopefully you can get a PS5 in time before this game to come out using the Decima engine, which is uh, the Horizon Forbidden West engine. There's so much here. That, that like, okay, so like we, we're going to spend another 40 minutes talking about just this. There's so much here. So these are... Do I want to... Okay, let's just continue. Okay, so... Okay. You know what? You stop, Ben. <laughs> okay, so first, first thing I'm going to point out, because it doesn't have any sort of big significance, is when... Uh, when whoever this is hits the the guitar, uh, the people in the background have the little exclamation marks on their face, and I like that a lot because oh, I, like I did a lot. not even notice that. That's awesome. Uh, so I'm really excited whenever I get to see the exclamation mark pop up. That's just a quick little thing. I have it. Uh, I have an exclamation mark T-shirt. I should have worn. Oh, uh, I guess people aren't seeing our video; they're just hearing us. But yeah, so it's 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 all good. But yeah, uh, so th- who we're looking at? Uh, instinctively, one might want to be like, ah. It's got to be Troy Baker's character because they're singing. Uh, I don't know if it is. It might be part of Troy Baker. It might not be. Uh, I. Th- it's got Amelie's hair. It's got mm-hmm. her kipu. Uh, it's got. There's stuff on her the face. The strap. Her face is uh, like more of. Uh, 
Amelie's face, like the yeah. structure of it. Like that's not Higgs's like facial structure. It has eyelashes, like feminine eyelashes on it as well. If you zoom in, like there's like that silver around the eyes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it just yeah. And then yeah, on the guitar strap, you do have uh, a, the a symbol. Things and all You've got that. the butterfly things. You got a symbol that looks like the uh, like Amelie statue that they were carrying around. Um, and you have, uh, I mean, he's got this like exposed stomach area. It looks kind of like his, their, they, I'm going to say they, cause it's an androgynous character for now that they have like this B, BB container tech stomach. So, so maybe let them use their or deck without a BB. Oh, that's wow. right. And all you needed a, B, a BB to, to use that. Cause it's, and, it's, and they it's all seem weird... to have it too. Yeah. Uh, and I know uh, there's another thing I was reading about how uh, Higgs was kind of really into like Egyptian type of like uh, ideas and stuff. And there's something about like organs in a jar and having all of your organs being kept in a place like that out where you can see it that kind of sort of mentally makes my brain do a thing. But uh, interesting. I'm I'm wondering if this is some sort of combination of um, Amelie and, and I, I think that's what it's going to be. Yeah, yeah I th- I think what it's going to be is that Higgs was left on the beach and th- this cult somehow brought him back, but it's not just him; it's Amelie. And now, so like, it's it, it. I mean, that would be the ultimate Higgs and an Amelie cross breed <laughs> would yeah. be the ultimate villain because it's it's Higgs with his like nihilistic like I'm bringing about the last strength like I want this to happen with Amelie's like ability to do that like they would t- again talking about two halves making a whole like all this stuff like Higgs had the will and Amelie had the power to make the last stranding happen but they couldn't because they were they were ultimately at odds like that their, their their choices were at odds and so like the idea again of a drawbridge of these two halves kind of connecting like if this is some kind of like higgs uh amelie hybrid you know what's stopping him from bringing about the last stranding if he now has the the keys to the kingdom so to speak yeah um he has an uh, an audra audra deck i don't know how you pronounce that um, which again, you need those to detect BTs. Like, so BTs are back. Like, why do you even have this? Like, he didn't even need one in the first one. Why did he even have one in the first one? Right? Because he could see BTs. Yeah. Do you, I don't know. It's it's a thing, and I'm also wondering. Uh, in whatever we're looking at, I'm guessing uh, some big part of was in that sarcophagus, mm-hmm. and this is post getting that delivered. Yes, I, I mean, I th- I think he this this entity this homily <laughs> Higgs and yeah, Amelie, yeah, yeah. this homily. Um, I think they were he was in that. Like, yeah, I think yeah. he was in that sarcophagus. Whether it's parts of him, I don't know. Uh, I I think he looks. It looks cool though. Like, I think like this is such a cool design and like absolutely speaks to I think some old school like Metal Gear Solid uh villains and stuff like that like we're getting a lot more of that now which is exciting um should we have connected so that's that's going to be the theme you know Hideo Kojima did say after talking you know after showing this trailer off at the game awards he basically said uh I wrote the the second game the pandemic happened I scrapped it and I completely rewrote it so that's something that you know to keep in mind as well of uh, like this intention of like should we have connected like um are we really better off for having done this? Uh, I'm sure that, you know, that's going to be a main theme of, of the game. Um, also something real quick before we get out of here, uh, something that was said, a line of dialogue that was said by a character that I haven't, I could not recognize the voice of said something along the lines of, it wasn't the United States, United Cities of America that did this. It was mm-hmm. APAC, which is oh. the third logo that we don't see in this trailer. But again, Kojima teased it, and it stands for Automated Public Assistance Company. Uh, you'll see the logo on the screen right now. Uh, it has like this very East India Trading Company look. It's like this compass. It's like look. a navigator's compass again, yeah. like uh, another maritime 
hint that we're going to be crossing, you know, water going somewhere else that isn't America. And, you know, the first game, you know, that was America, right? Like, it's meant to be you are going from the East Coast to the West Coast. So it makes sense that the next game takes would take place in, in a new location or extend where we could travel to. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think... Oh, I forgot about this. Uh, so we get a bit of dialogue here of um, Sam saying Lou, like, and it's and it's this octopus that's uh, in the in the BB tank. <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping this is one of those weird little like nightmare things that happened while you were in your room because I don't I don't want I don't want Lou to be turned an into octopus, an octopus. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a uh, it's a, a bit a bit spooky. Yeah, I, I wonder if it's like b- the the BT is kind of like in flux, like it's something's happening on the beach that is, you know, causing it to in flux. But again, I remember I remember there was a ton of stuff that was teased when they were showing off trailers for Death Stranding one. That was like, what am I looking at? And some of it was in game, but some of it, yeah, was like a nightmare that he was experiencing. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, like him traveling to like you know uh, all the stuff with cliff and all that turned out to like be not really happening um so maybe that is what is happening here uh as well yeah i i have no clue octopus you know we've got uh, squids octopuses we've got the magellan logo that looks to be like a an octopus or whatever or a squid so i don't know that that one is like totally up in the air um so there we go that is the that is a full breakdown of the death stranding 2 trailer uh any uh closing remarks here uh ben uh no, nothing other than i can't wait to see more of this and i'm, I'm be <laughs> looking at every single trailer as close as i can and please if anyone else uh notices anything that we skipped or, or didn't see or anything I, yes, I want let to, us know in the comments for sure i'll be reading all of them because i'm very excited to just gather information and go crazy about a new kojima game yeah 100 percent. yes please do let us know in the comments if there's anything that you think we missed or your thoughts on our takes on what we saw here in the trailer please also like this video and subscribe to GameSpot because this is the tip of the iceberg for our coverage on death stranding 2 and until next time everyone 